Iron Man Frankfurt. This is the deepest Iron Man start list we've seen all year and could be considered one of the strongest fields we've ever seen outside of a world championship or challenge role. And in this video, I'm going to break down my top 10 picks for the race. The field is headlined by Patrick Lang, Christian Blumenfeld and Trevor Foley, and it has 19 athletes that have already qualified for Kona. That is crazy. It's great to see the Pro Series encouraging more athletes to race more often and fight for points in the overall standings. We've got the top three ranked athletes all racing in Frankfurt and Lang, Foley and Mignon will all be looking to score a second good Ironman score to improve their standings on the leaderboard. Patrick Lang was one of the pre-season favourites to take the Pro Series title, but with the emergence of Trevor Foley, who's been better over the middle distance, this race could be really significant at the end of the season. Clement Mignon is another one who raced really well in Texas and has another good 70.3 score, so if he can get a good score on the board here, he'll be fighting for the podium in the Pro Series. With a soft score of 88.07 and it's a goal tier race, there'll be decent PTO points up here for the winner. You can expect them to score in the low 90s depending on the winning margin, and athletes get a 5% bonus on top of their best result for gold tier or below races. There are six world championship slots on offer and with 19 athletes already qualified for Kona, we could see them rolling into the 20s. Notable athletes that haven't yet got a slot are Christian Hogenhauk who narrowly missed out in Vittoria, Max Newman who's just returned to racing, Gregory Barnaby who's eighth in Nice last year but who's only managed eighth in Cairns and hasn't yet got a slot, and Menno Coolhouse, who is DQ'd in Texas, and many, many more. Frankfurt is a relatively fast course. It's a two-loop lake swim, a two-lap undulating bike, and a four-lap run. I'm going to break down my top 10 picks for the race, and to choose 10 guys out of this field was tough. I've lost count of how many times I thought I was done, and then I've gone back and changed something. I think there are 25 to 30 guys in this field that could finish in the top 10, depending on the day. So don't get too annoyed if I've missed someone off, but comment down below who you think should have been in the top 10. I'm going to go through my picks from 1 to 10, and at number 1 I've got Patrick Lang. He was one of the big pre-season favourites to take the Pro Series title, but he struggled over his middle distance races so far, but he was always going to make more of an impact on the full Ironmans. He finished second in Texas, but with Thomas Rodriguez now provisionally suspended for doping, presumably he'll move up to that first place, depending on the outcome of the hearing, so he could end up with the full 5,000 points for that race. He's coming off a DNF at Challenge Rock where he got kicked in the swim and he wasn't able to continue on the bike. Will that have had a lasting impact on his training? How much has he been able to do over the last six weeks? We haven't heard anything. Presumably he recovered quickly and has been able to get back into the routine of training and is coming into this race pretty fresh. He'll likely find himself in that chase pack of swimmers, but he'll lose a chunk of time on the bike. In Texas, he lost 13 minutes to Marquardt and Callan, but it did come back to bite them on the run where they both faded, so maybe they overbiked a bit. I'd expect him to lose in the region of 10 minutes at this race to the best riders. Now he is the best runner in the field. The question is where he comes off the bike in comparison to the other top runners. Trevor Foley showed his prowess in Lake Placid and is probably the biggest threat to Patrick Lang winning on home soil. Lang is the better swimmer and probably the better runner, but Foley will eat time out of him on the bike. I'm expecting Foley to catch up to him and drop him and it just depends how much time he can gain to T2. Now, I'm still picking Patrick Lang to take the win. I think he's going to be fresher and he's got the experience, so I'm picking him for number one. In second, I've got Trevor Foley. He made a slightly delayed start to the season after a bike crash left him with a bad concussion, but since then he's raced four times, picking up three wins and one podium. That record includes his seriously impressive performance at Lake Placid a few weeks ago, where he swam and rode with Lionel Sanders, ran away from the Canadian, and chased down Matthew Marquardt to claim his first Ironman win, running a 2.36 on a seriously tough course. This has catapulted him into contention for the Ironman Pro Series, and a good result here will put him in a really good position going into the business end of the season. The big question is, how has he recovered from that race? He raced a low-key 70.3 just a week after Lake Placid and won in Maine, but that's not going to have helped things. But we have seen that Ironman fatigue is becoming a bit of a thing of the past. We saw Cat Matthews and Sam Laidlow race Victoria and then both have really good performances at T100 London. 
We've seen Els Visser doing every race under the sun and Danielle Lewis race Challenge Rock and then Lake Placid two weeks later and one in Lake Placid. So athletes are recovering even faster and Trevor Foley's had four weeks since Lake Placid to get in recovery for Frankfurt. He'll have a deficit out of the water and he could find himself riding through the field on his own. If he can quickly catch up to the other strong riders in the field like Cam Worth, Clement Mignon, Christian Hogenhauer, then he could be on to win if he can get working with them. Otherwise, he could be doing a lot of the work by himself. Like I've said, I think he'll catch and drop Lang on the bike. It just depends how much time he can gain on his way to T2. He is one of the best runners in the field, and I think he could run with pretty much anyone, but I still think Patrick Lang has the edge. That's why I've got him in second ahead of everyone else. Rounding out the podium, I've got Clement Mignon. Now he's an athlete I was surprised to see take a T100 contract, but it is a significant amount of money and security to turn down. You look at his results and it's a tale of two halves. T100 series, not great. In fact, pretty bad. And then on the pro series, he's had two solid results that's setting him up well for the end of the season with third in Texas and third in the Saba. Those results probably sum up where he is as an athlete. Better over the longer distance, can compete at 70.3, but probably not with the top, top guys. He was so strong at Ironman Texas, riding through the different packs, and he put nearly 10 minutes into Patrick Lang, mostly riding by himself. Now, when it comes to the run, he lost nine minutes to Patrick Lang in Texas. This is the thing that's holding him back from really competing for the win at these races. In Texas, he matched his marathon PB of 244.37 that he set here in Frankfurt two years ago. I think the winner of this race is going to be running sub 240 and maybe low 240s at best. So I think if Mignon's in the chance of winning, he's going to have to run a PB. But I think that 244 would be enough to make him onto the podium. Now in fourth, I've got Christian Blumenfeld. And if this was the Blumenfeld of 24 months ago, maybe even 12 months ago, he'd be the favourite for this race. But it's been nearly 12 months since he did his last middle distance race and since then he's raced four short course races and his best result is 10th. That sums up his underwhelming return to short course. Given his form and his lack of prep for this race, it could be a bit of a stretch to consider him a true contender for the win here. But winning an Ironman just two weeks after the Olympics would be the most Christian Blumenfeld thing I've ever seen. He's typically swam front pack at Ironman races, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see him try and sit on, on the bike and just conserve energy. The run is where we could see him struggle, but he just needs to finish to validate his Kona slot, so I'm not really sure what we can expect from him. He could take it easy and just make his way around the course to ensure he gets that slot, but taking it easy, I'm not sure that's something that ever crosses his mind, so don't be surprised if you see him gunning it. In fifth, I've got Kasper Stepniak. He had a breakthrough year in 2023, picking up his first two pro wins, and he finished off the year with second at Ironman Florida behind Rudy Von Berg. It's that race that is a template for his success here in Frankfurt. He swam front pack, rode with the leaders, and then ran a solid 2.45 to take second, ahead of Matthew Marquardt, Magnus Ditlev, as well as fellow Ironman Frankfurt competitors, Matt Hansen, and Cam Worth and Jesper Svensson. He's had a solid season so far, eighth at Singapore T100, fourth at the Challenge Champs, and just went back to back at Challenge Gdansk. Expect to see him swim with the leaders, but after that result in Florida, his competitors will be making sure he's working on the bike. He's only done two Ironman races before, running 252 and 245, so if we see another leap from him on the run, then he'll be in contention for the podium and maybe the win. In sixth, I've got Cam Worth. He's looked very solid in 2024 with three podiums already, the most he's had in any season since 2021. He still hasn't quite put together an all-round performance. In South Africa, he had a good swim coming out just two minutes behind the leaders, but then faded on the run, running a 2.53. Conversely, in Victoria, he came out four minutes down on the main front pack but then ran a 2.44 to make his way through the field and get the final spot on the podium. He talked about how he came into that race in Vittoria off the back of a big swim block and was carrying that fatigue into the race. If he comes to Frankfurt a bit fresher, I'm expecting him to have a much better swim. If he could swim with someone like Clement Mignon or Christian Hogenhauer, they would be seriously dangerous on the bike and could chase down the leaders. 
worst run has looked pretty good this year in Vittoria 244 is near the best that we've seen and I think he's just getting better throughout the year. In seventh I've got Christian Hogenhauk. He's coming off a solid result in Vittoria but he must be gutted that he faded on the run and fell out of the Kona slots. Given how many people are already qualified he should be well in line to receive his slot to the Big Island. He swam and rode really well in Vittoria but the wheels fell off on the run whether he just overworked on the bike or he fell apart in the heat. Expect to see him swim with the main chase pack and he's one of the strongest riders in the field so I wouldn't be surprised if he breaks away from them. If Worth has a better swim they would make a dangerous duel on the bike but also the likes of Mignon and Mike Phillips. That would make an amazing group to chase down the leaders, chase down Patrick Lang but also try and hold off Trevor Foley. Hogan Howe's run has been a bit unreliable. We've seen him run in the 250s and we've seen him run in the low to mid 240s. So we're never sure what we're gonna get. And that will be the deciding factor of where he finishes in this field. In eighth, I've got Braden Curry. Now it's been a bit of a bumpy year for Curry after DNFs in Texas and Lake Placid. And that's forced him into racing Frankfurt. So he gets the full three full Ironman scores in the Pro Series. At least Lake Placid was down to a mechanical rather than any physical reason, but it's still got to be tough to deal with. We saw a flash of what he can do at Ironman Cairns where he took second behind Matt Burton, but he was still a level below where I expect to see him on the run, especially in Cairns. Normally I'd be penciling him in to that front pack swim, but he hasn't made it in any race so far this year. Maybe with a deeper field here in Frankfurt, he'll be able to stick in there, and I think he needs to and ride with the likes of Stepniak, Coolhass, Newman, Zapunkt, and work with them to hold off Worth, Foley, Mignon, and Hogenhauk. There is a world where he wins this race, but it would need a significant turnaround from his performances so far this year. In ninth, I've got Menno Kulhas. He kicked off his year with a really impressive result at Miami T100, where he ran really well to come sixth, running the third fastest split of the day. He then went on to race Ironman Texas, but was DQ for picking up a penalty and not serving it at the next aid station. He's one of the strongest swimmers in the field and I wouldn't be surprised if he led out. He's not as strong on the bike but he'll find a good group to work with and he's typically ran in the low 240s but I wouldn't be surprised if he sets a new PB here the way he's been running so far this year. Now we're coming to my final pick to round out the top 10 and I'm taking Mike Phillips. He's already raced seven times this year including three Ironmans and he's coming off consecutive podiums from Ironman Australia and Ironman Cairns where he had similar performances, a chase pack swim, a top three bike and a top two run where he ran around the 243 mark. I think he'll be looking to work with Cam Worth on the bike if Worth has a better swim than he did in Victoria. The pair swam together in Nice and came out of the water together so I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen again. Worth is probably the stronger rider but they would make a really dangerous duo on the road and they're evenly matched on the run but I maybe give the edge to Mike Phillips. So there are my top 10 picks for Ironman Frankfurt. And like I said at the start, it was so tough to pick just 10 guys. Here are some of the other athletes I was considering to make the top 10. We've got Matt Hansen, who is seventh in Texas, sixth in Lake Placid. Weirdly, he's been better over the middle distance this year. We've had Robert Wilkoszewski. He's really struggled this year with two DNFs, but He's got that prowess of a top 10 finish at the World Championships from last year. Jackson Laudry, 7th in Lake Placid in his return to the full distance. Gregory Barnaby, 8th in Cairns, didn't get his Kona slot, but he did finish 8th in Nice last year. His swim and bike looked good in London, but he faded on the run. Max Newman, his first Ironman back, his swim and bike looked good in London, but he really struggled on the run. He said that run was the longest he's done in 18 months. Ben Hamilton, 3rd Ironman New Zealand, but did DNF in Cairns. Bradley Weiss, fourth in Vittoria, maybe I'm completely overlooking him. Christian Oleg, fifth in Cairns. Jesper Svensson, first Ironman race this year, but he's had two top sixes last year. James Teagle, sixth in Vittoria. Paul Schuster, sixth in Texas, and he's finished fourth here before. Matthias Pedersen, seventh in Vittoria. That list of athletes alone would make a really strong Ironman start list, and I haven't even got them in the top 10. So it just goes to show how deep this field is. So there we have it. Here are my top 10 picks on screen again. I've got Patrick Lang taking the win, Trevor Foley taking second, and Clement Mignon rounding out the podium. I hope you enjoyed this video, and make sure you tune in for the race on Sunday.